the last two big talk shows that you appeared on was Don Lemon on CNN and Tucker Carlson. And they both were fired, you know, yeah. hours after appearing on uh, uh, having you as a guest um, to talk about this identity crisis and about kind of bringing people together. Can we run? Let's run that uh, clip, Zach, that you have of the yep. Don Lemon discussion, because I think this comes to bear on these questions of national identity, Vivek, and what you're putting at the at the foreground of your um, presidential run. So let's look at this clip real yeah. quick. And let me just note that this is, uh, you know, edited down for time, but we have okay. the links to everything in the description. We fought a civil war in this country to give black Americans the equal protection under the law that we failed to secure them in 1776. But then you want to know what happened? Southern states passed anti-gun laws that stopped black people from owning guns. The Democrat Party then, as in now, wanted to put them back in chains. That war was not fought for black people to have guns. That's, that's, that's not... That war was fought for black people to have freedoms in this country. Yeah. Actually, that's why the Civil War was fought. Okay. And the sad that part wasn't about fought it. For, for black people to have guns, I think. Actually, you don't know, funny fact is black people did not get to enjoy the other freedoms until their Second Amendment rights were secured. And I think that that's black, one of the lessons that we still learned. people aren't allowed to enjoy the freedoms. I disagree well with you country. on that, Don. I okay. disagree with you. And I think okay. you're doing a disservice well, to our country. Okay. By failing to recognize when the you, fact that we have you already black the law skin, then you live in this country, then you can disagree with me. But we're not. Well, here's where you and I have a different point of view. I think we should be able to express our views regardless of the color of our skin. We should have this debate I'm not saying you without me regarding views, you as a black man, but me regarding you as a fellow citizen. That you're That's sitting what I think here, we whatever ethnicity you are, explaining to me whatever ethnicity about I'm, I'll what tell it's you. like to be black. Whatever America. ethnicity I'm I am, I'll tell you what I am. I'm an Indian American. I'm proud of it. But I think we should have this debate. Black, white doesn't matter. I think we should have this debate on the content of the. If you're do it, you should do it in an honest way. Uh, and let's note that, uh, according to the New York Times, this might have been one of the last straws for Don Lemon. They uh, write here that the incident left several CNN leaders exasperated. So just before we get into the substance of your disagreement with Don Lemon there, what's your reaction to his dismissal? I mean, look, I think that depends on the mission of your organization. If the mission of your organization is to foster a particular worldview, in this case, a woke worldview, and to advance that, that's a perfectly legitimate, we live in a free country, you're allowed to start an enterprise where that's your purpose, Don Lemon would make a great host. But if your stated mission of your organization is what Chris Licht, the new CEO of CNN, says their mission is, is to foster diverse viewpoints and actually engage in the purveyance of news and opinions that are diverse in nature, on your programs, then Don Lemon would not be a good host if he shouts down guests on the base of the color of their skin saying they can't make those arguments and you didn't have the segment where he was also shouting at his producers and preventing his co-host no. from getting into the conversation. No. So, so it depends on what the mission of your organization is. CNN has stated its missions. I think it would be very consistent with that mission for them to find a better anchor than Don Lemon. So I'm happy to have played the final role in squeezing uh, the lemonade out of the lemon and, and you know moving on with it. So. Yeah. Uh, I think more debates what we need. What's your pitch to black America, um, though? Because, you know, most yeah. blacks are, you know, blacks, the, the share of black votes that went to the GOP went up a little bit mm -hmm. under Trump in the second term. But, you know, basically since Eisenhower in his second term, you know, it's rare when a, when a re Republican candidate can get 10 percent of the black vote. Um, you know, what's your pitch to black America? In, well, as first you're of casting all, about for a new national identity. Yeah, so the first thing I would say is I don't view there as being one black America, just like there's no one white America or one Indian American America. I reject that premise at the outset. But you know, how, wh why do we take a look at this demographic that tends to vote Democrat? Yeah. I think a big part of the problem is Republicans have not explained what our intentions are. And, and I say our, I mean, I'm... I'm an yep. America first conservative. I am using the Republican Party as a vehicle to advance my set of ideals. I'm very open about that. I'm not a partisan politician or hack. I could care less for political partisanship. Most of it bores me, but we're playing the game of, of presidential politics. Let's talk about the Republican Party. I think let's look at the facts. I mean, Lyndon Johnson created a so-called great society. It's the biggest misnomer in modern political history that wasn't a very great society for the very black people it was supposed to help. Paid mothers, government money to have an incentive to get the dad out of the house so they could make more money. Uncle Sam's better for me than you over here. Maybe I'll marry him instead. So how you get to 
over 70% of black kids being born into two-parent households in the 1960s to less than 30% today, you get what you pay for is the answer to that. And I think it's an affront. I don't think that's been good for black Americans across the country. But isn't it also true, the reason, I mean, you know, and I, I'm thinking of somebody like Jackie Robinson, who in 1960 campaigned for Richard Nixon and 1964 campaigned for Democrats because Republicans voted against the Civil Rights Act and the Voting Rights Act of the mid 60s when much of the country was still under legal segregation, where it was illegal to serve blacks and whites equally. It was illegal for blacks to go to certain schools and things like that. And it, it strikes me as, you know, kind of if you start the clock in 1968 or 1972, it's one thing. But, um, you know, this I mean, I think this is part of the Republican problem with an appeal to black Americans is that. Yeah, I mean, we, that's ancient you know, history we, at this point for the no, partisans. No, it is know. literally, if you're talking about, you know, Lyndon Johnson, you know, we're talking yeah. about the 60s. And Barry fair Goldwater enough, fair in enough. 64, fair enough. you know. I, I was talking about Lyndon Johnson because many of those policies are still in effect today, right? Civil Rights Act did pass, and there's broad consensus in favor of the Civil Rights Acts today. I think that there's, there should not be, in my opinion, broad consensus around the vestiges of Lyndon Johnson's Great Society. So that's a okay. distinction I draw. Right. I mean, the Republican Party is the party that was the abolitionist party and the pro, in the post-Reconstruction right. era also wanted to put guns in the household of black Americans so they could actually secure those civil rights, as I was talking about in that clip. So go back. I mean, these parties, like I said, these labels mean very little. If you go okay. far enough back, parties have flip-flop. But what I say is that the policies I care about want to go to the root causes, Restore the nuclear family structure as a cultural norm in this country, including in black America. Restore a focus on education. School choice is a big part of this. Empowering many black families that are trapped in ghetto-like communities for their kids to be trapped in those schools. And I use that word intentionally to provoke the point that we're really confining people to the public school systems where they live without school choice programs. Democrats are the ones who are opposed to school choice programs, right? That was the reason live stream with Vivek Ramaswamy, who's running for the Republican nomination for president and has just published Capitalist Punishment, a book length diatribe against ESG and other aspects of what he considers woke capitalism. If you want to watch the full conversation, go here. If you want to watch another excerpt, go here and come back next Thursday, every Thursday at 1 p.m. when Zach Weismuller and I are talking to somebody even more interesting than the last week. Thanks for watching.